Well, I think the biggest uh, challenge to a project like this is not only the scope and the size of it uh, in the format that we're working on, but just the fact that you are uh, creating a, a fully fictional science fiction world. And that's not to say that hasn't been done before. It's uh, done quite a bit. And, uh, but nevertheless, it still poses the same challenges and problems. And uh, how do you uh, uh, create something that's interesting and different and yet believable uh, so that the audience can be at, at once amazed and, and enthralled, uh, but yet uh, fully accepting of this so that they can enjoy the story and get involved in, in the characters and the, and the drama. So all of that has to come together because I, I've always felt that visual effects are uh, like uh, cinematography or music or any other aspect of making a film are one of the tools that, that helps tell the story and so it has to be uh, realistic but of course interesting and exciting and, and, and dramatic. So uh, we've all worked together to try and create a fairly unique vision I think of what Dune is while being uh, faithful and responsive to uh, the source material, the book of course, and taking that as our first cue as to uh, how to design everything from cities to weapons and and uh, the sandworm and, and try and paying, trying to pay attention to all of those uh, details so that, so that the results are uh, authentic and, and uh, faithful you know, to the book. And I think the production designer, Kreika, has, has done a wonderful uh, job with, with uh, creating the sets and the environment. And of course, Vittorio Storaro uh, photographing all of this and bringing all of that together. And so now, with the visual effects, we sort of add uh, the last uh, element uh, to all of these images and, and hopefully make it a complete world. Uh, well, let's see, we have several categories of visual effects. We're uh, doing, um, of course, the uh, giant sandworms uh, that are feature very prominently in Dune, uh, which will be done uh, in a combination of uh, computer graphic effects as well as uh, a, a miniature 10-foot-long uh, version that we will photograph back in L.A. Uh, so there's quite a quite a bit of uh, scenes with with the uh, sandworms. We filmed. Uh, we had a full scale section of the uh, what we called the worm skin, which uh, we had actors and stunt people on top of as they're riding atop the worm. And all of this was in front of a big green screen, as you can see behind me here, uh, to combine with the uh, desert backgrounds as well as uh, the rest of the worm, which we'll uh, fill in. Another category of uh, effects is um, the uh, uh, thopter, as we've uh, uh, touched on here. The, uh, the thopter uh, flying around and other spacecraft uh, that are seen in orbit around the planet uh, and various other uh, uh, scenes of uh, spacecraft flying around. And then, of course, there are uh, what I would perhaps call miscellaneous effects, which doesn't, doesn't mean they're any less important, but uh, they don't really fall into a, a large category, and that would include uh, scenes of a hologram uh, that, that uh, features a character named Dr. Yui, who is uh, speaking to uh, Paul in, in a lecture, and, and uh, laser-type uh, muzzle flash animation effects, uh, all kinds of stuff like that. So. Okay, uh, what, what we see behind me is a full-scale version of the Thopter, which is sort of a combination of a fighter aircraft and a helicopter uh, in the, this future world of uh, Dune. And uh, this, is, of course, has been built uh, full-scale on set so that the actors can uh, uh, be involved uh, interacting with it directly. We're then going to build a, a CGI version, which is computer graphics uh, version, uh, that will actually do all the flying around and, and the, the fighting and the shooting of rockets and all of that kind of stuff. So the combination of uh, these 
uh, visual effects plus the actual physical full-scale version will hopefully create the illusion that we have a whole fleet of thopters flying around the planet Arrakis. Okay, well, all of the visual effects will be done in Los Angeles. Uh, there are several companies who are involved in, in the actual creating of the visual effects. There's a company called Area 51. Uh, there's a company called Netter Digital. There's a company called AI Effects. Those are the three principal uh, visual effects companies supplying uh, the, uh, the work for Dune. And then there are some additional uh, companies uh, uh, doing... Uh, a handful of effects or matte paintings or, or uh, that sort of work and so basically they these uh, companies will take the live action scenes that we have photographed here in Prague uh, whether it is a green screen or just a normal scene such as in this hangar location or on the on the uh, desert uh, set and then process that footage in such a way that the uh, images of the sandworm or the thopter as created by uh, in the computer and modeled in the computer and then animated uh, are, are all put together uh, in, into one complete visual effect that will amaze and startle you. Well, the number of people involved in, in the completion of the visual effects uh, is kind of hard to pin down as we speak at this moment because the work hasn't really fully geared up. Uh, I imagine that it would be easily approaching 75 to 100 people uh, between the various visual effects companies and other uh, personnel involved uh, in, in the work on the visual effects. It'll take about eight to nine months to complete all the visual effects. Uh, this includes some of the work that was actually begun while we were still shooting the movie, which involved uh, modeling the, uh, the worm and the thopter and, and uh, various other development work and design work. So uh, starting uh, that early parallel to our shooting even, uh, all the way through uh, to the ultimate delivery in August or September. My involvement on set, my responsibility is simply once, uh, once we get on set, of course, we've planned out everything fairly carefully. We have storyboards and we have uh, shot designs and we've had gone through meetings. And of course, John Harrison, who's directing the movie, uh, also wrote the script. So he's been very involved with uh, shaping the whole project right from the beginning. And then Vittorio Storaro, the cinematographer, and I, and uh, Kraika, the production designer, we would all get together and go through uh, the project in pre-production, practically uh, scene by scene, uh, literally scene by scene, and discuss the shots and the lighting and the uh, whole concept of everything. And so once we get onto the set, we all have a fairly clear and consistent idea of what needs to be done and so then it's simply a case of monitoring to make sure that there are no unexpected problems or and from my point of view in terms of visual effects that will cause us uh, difficulties later or if we uh, you know need to change something or adapt to a new location or there's uh, some surprises like that so